Hello from Zion City International. This is Lady Davis. I am in place of Pastor Davis. Just a little change in our plans on today. Um, just come to say hello and to see how you're doing and to let you know that we love you and we appreciate you for viewing our video and that you're more than welcome to come to the church. It is located on Van Dyke inside of the Tabernacle at 8 Mile. We would love to see you in the place on Saturdays at 6.30. So, pray you had a great week. Um, I'd just like to give you a few of the places you can reach us at. You can reach us at our 24-hour prayer line at 313-736-3068. You can also email us at Zion City International Church, all one word, at yahoo.com. You can hit us up on Twitter at Zion City Church. You can hit us up on Facebook, Zion City International. We're just all over the place. So anywhere you go, we're just about there. Um, so we're just going to give a short prayer and then I'll, then I'll move on. God, I thank you right now for those that are viewing us on tonight. God, I ask that you bless them that you cover them in your blood right now god we thank you for your grace and your mercy god we ask we pray that this broadcast is a blessing to your people god let them be edified and let the devil be horrified god we thank you we love you we praise you and we give you glory in the name of jesus amen well i'm going to um pastor wanted me to give you all my testimony so that's where we'll start um i come from a single parent home didn't know my father. I am the oldest of four children. Um, testimony is so huge and so broad, but I've been molested. I've been raped. Um, I've done drugs. I've had children out of wedlock. I dibbled and dabbled in homosexuality. Um, I dibbled and dabbled in prostitution and drug dealing. Um, I've dibbled and dabbled in a whole lot of stuff. Um, just so you know, it, it's kind of from A to Z. If you think about it, yeah, I probably tried it. Um, I had my first child at 16. I had my second child at 21. I had my third child at 23. They were all out of wedlock. Um, lost my virginity, had my virginity taken, didn't lose it, had it taken at 12. And so when I realized that I had a commodity, for you know, for those those of you that will read between the lines, I use it to the best of my ability, and that's how I got into prostitution and I became sexually active. Um, I've had over 200 men, can't remember none of their names except a handful. Um, I had enough men for a couple of women. I'm not proud of that, but it is what it is. I thank God that I don't have a disease. I'm not dying for nothing, nothing that reoccurs on a regular basis that I have to take medicine for. So I thank God for that. Um, I have five children now, and I'm married now. And I've been saved for 18 years, and I've been with the same man for 18 years. And it's a it's an honor and it's a blessing to be with one man for that many years you get to know him they get to know you you they know your likes your dislikes you know their likes their dislikes um i know that in this society that it is a lot of people that have gone through we're going to switch gears um that have gone through abuse in their life as a child as an adult um, some of some of us maybe have even been the one that abused. I've learned this one thing in life that those that abuse have been abused themselves. So people just don't decide to abuse somebody just because that's something they can do. They have been abused themselves and so in turn they turn around and do the same thing or something worse to someone else. So I want you all to be encouraged and know that God is a way maker and that God knows your plight and that God sees what you've gone through and what you have gone through and what you're going through right now. There's nothing too big for God. There's nothing too hard for God. You have not gone so far 
that God can't reach you. He's just that big. He can be listening to me right now and listening to you at the same time and give us both undivided attention. That's the type of God I serve. So, I mean, God is just an awesome God, and I would love for you to get to know him. I mean, is you don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops and and jump over chairs and all that kind of stuff. If the Holy Ghost makes you do that, then that's fine. But um, you don't have to go through any of that to receive Christ. It's just saying, Lord, I, I repent of all of my sins. I receive you. As my Lord and Savior, I believe that you died and that you rose again on the third day for me. I believe that you sit at the right hand of the Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. And there you are. You're saved if you said that prayer with me. So I thank God for those of you all that said that prayer with me. Um, I want to also talk about another part of my testimony when I was about... Um, hmm. I'll say 21. I um I was introduced again to crack cocaine. And um young girl, you know, just living life. I had two kids by now. You know, I was I was living with my mom or I was in and out of my mom's house and here and there and everywhere. Didn't have to worry about my daughter because she was with my mom and my son was with his grandparents. So I was kid free and fancy free, as they say. And so um, I came back home um, to visit my mom and, you know, stayed the weekend. And she kept disappearing into the closet, into the pantry. In the kitchen, there was a pantry. And I'm like, what is she doing in there? So I goes back there and she's smoking. I'm looking at like, what are you doing? And she was like, you want to try? I was like, okay. Figure it's good enough for my mom, it's good enough for me. So I tried it. And, um, and it went from being just Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to Sunday to Saturday thing. It was a gradual thing. It was real gradual, it was real subtle, and before I knew it, it was every day. Every day I just had to have it. You know, it went from recreational to I got to have it just like I got to eat. And, um, you know, did a lot of stuff that wasn't pleasing to myself or pleasing to God for drugs. You know, I dealt with the drug dealers and, you know, I mean, I had so much credit, it wasn't even funny. I was on welfare, didn't have a job. But my credit was good because they knew, oh, she gonna pay up. You know, it had got so bad to where it was, my drug habit was a thousand dollars a day. And so, yes, I paid my thousand dollar debt. If it was a thousand dollars, then that's what I was paying. And I was doing any and everything that I could to do it. Sell my body, steal from myself, steal from the dope man, steal from my mama, steal from my kids. It didn't even matter. I did whatever I had to do to get my drugs and um, didn't make me feel good but it had a hold on me it, it had me it was my master I was no longer its master and we have to remember that things you may think you're mastering it but in reality it's mastering you and so the drugs was actually mastering me and I thought I had it all together I was like oh I can quit when I want to and I don't have to have it and yeah whatever tried that and so I tried to go without it but it was like I had to have it. I could hear it calling me I could smell it you know and I was like oh I got to have it so you know that's how that that went um, I became an alcoholic by the time I was 20 um, I had to get up with a drink I had to go to bed with a drink um, you know Sundays you gotta wait till 12 noon I would always have some stash so I wouldn't have to wait till 12 noon. By 12 noon, I was high enough for the whole household and I was waiting to get high some more. You know, and that just goes to show that I thought I had a handle on the alcohol and the alcohol had a handle on me. It was like, you're going to do what I want you to do. And in the midst of all this, I was having children and I was drinking and smoking while I was pregnant um, with my last child. Well, with, uh, with my third child, um, I was pregnant and I was doing drugs and um, 
it had such a hold on me that I didn't know what to even do with the pregnancy. I'm like, uh, what am I gonna do now? I'm pregnant. I don't, I don't know what to do. If they find out I'm on drugs, they gonna take my child and take my other two. So I waited six months before I went to the, before I went to see to even see a doctor. And um, so I finally did see a doctor and. I had the I had the baby and the baby was exposed to crack cocaine so it wasn't addicted it was just exposed to it which still gave it some um, some delays as he grew up and um, and when I had him and I had to stay in the hospital and they was like well you can't go home until you see a social worker and right there I prayed Lord if my child don't leave this hospital neither do I and so we waited to talk to the social worker and we saw the social worker and um and they let us go home and then i did a program and um it it didn't really help and then i did i did the rehab i did i did the five-day detox it didn't really work i i went in and i did my five days and um i came back out uh worse than I was when I went in. When I got out of rehab, I had a check waiting on me. I had my welfare check waiting on me. And I went and cashed my welfare check and went and got me some drugs. And in the midst of while I was gone, my mother was watching um, my third son and I went to change his diaper and there was a sword on his little nutsack. So I was like, oh God, I got to take him to the hospital. So I took him to the hospital and just to show you how tied up and tangled up I was in the drugs, I, with the drugs, I took the drugs with me to the hospital. And so while I'm in the bathroom, I'm debating how I'm going to smoke my, smoke my dope in the bathroom. That's how bad it was. But I tell you the grace of God and God's blood has kept me and I got tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired and so when I got to that point he sent now my husband but he wasn't my husband then Pastor Davis he sent him through his godson which I had met five years prior and um, he invited me to um, to a musical called Power in the House and I went to the musical and I felt so much better but I knew I still had to go back to hell literally I knew I had to go back to the house where you know my mom was selling dope out of it and they was cooking up dope and it was just dope people knew our house okay and they knew Miss Rose they, they knew who that was everybody knew where she lived and what she was about and, um, and so I went to, to the concert that Saturday. Bless my soul. So I, I went to, he asked me if I wanted to go to church that Sunday. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I went to church with him that Sunday at Landmark Temple of Deliverance with His Holiness Bishop E.I. Nero, which is no longer here, which is my spiritual father. Um, bless his soul. And, um, and so they did the altar call and I sat there and I, you know, my flesh and my spirit fight. My spirit like, go on up there. My flesh like, no, you don't need this. You've been here, done that. You don't need to do all that. We got this. And my spirit ended up winning. And so I ended up going up there anyway and, uh, and giving my life to God. And I tell you, it was the best thing that I could have ever done for myself and my children because not only was the enemy trying to kill me he wanted them as well he wanted my seed he wanted my bloodline you know there's been drugs throughout my my natural bloodline for as far back as I can remember and I can remember all the way back to five so it, it was maybe even before that but he was after the seed so um, he he was really after, but the blood of Jesus covered my children, and I thank God for that. And so all of my child, all of the children are saved. I have two more um, within the and wedlock. Um, 
everybody's saved everybody know the lord everybody is working in ministry in some capacity um and i, I thank god for that you know they love the lord we have musicians and singers the boys are musicians and the girls are singers so you know i'm just so elated that God changed it around and that he broke that generational curse that was destined to take my children out, that was destined to kill the seed so that there would be no more, nobody would even know that I was even here because my children wouldn't even be here. But I thank God that he saved all of our children and that he's keeping all of our children and we're grandparents, so I am a grandmother. Um, of a three-year-old he is so adorable you guys um, and I'm so proud of his mom for taking care of business um, I'm just so proud to see that all the labor and all the teaching has not been in vain you know we taught our girls to be women we taught them how to be ladies at all times um, we taught them that they don't have to look for love from a man because they get that from their natural and their and their heavenly father and these are things we need to teach our young girls we need to teach them you don't have to look for love God is waiting to love you and you don't have to show all your body parts for somebody to love you you know if they love you they'll like your brain they'll like you covered up and then you don't have to be all covered up and not be sexy you can be covered up and sexy I don't know if you can tell, but I, I'm a I'm a plus size girl, and I think I can I can look sexy when I want to, and when I need to. But you know, we have to teach our young girls you don't have to show everything, because when they're talking to you and you got all your boobs out, guess what? They're not talking to you. They're talking to your boobs. And they're wondering what they can do with them and this, that, and the other. So you should give them a chance to get to know your mind and not your body first. That's backwards. Okay, so sorry about that. So I would just like to take um, this time to um, to just to give you something that God had given me a while back. And it is the scripture is Second Chronicles. 714 and this is what it says if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will hear heal their land that is a very it, it tells us what we need to do in order for God to heal us um, so it's just four things that I would like to talk to you about and the first thing that it tells us to do is to humble yourself and humbling yourself just basically means to admit that you sin say okay God I did it it wasn't my neighbor it wasn't my sister okay God it was me I did it second of all pray to God ask God to help you ask him to forgive you ask him to help you to forgive and to seek God continually. That means seek Him on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't have to spend six hours in this on your face if that's not what you're called for. If that's what you're called for, kudos. But if you're not called to six hours to lay out before God, talk to God. You don't have to be on your knees all the time. You can be sitting on the couch and just say, Lord, I thank you just for another day. I appreciate you waking me up this morning. Lord, it is such a beautiful day. Oh, by the way, Lord, how are you doing today? Be like, what are we doing today? Be like, what would you like for me to do today? Who would you like for me to bless today? You know, or if you're having a struggle, be like, okay, Lord, I'm struggling today. I, I don't know how to get out of bed today. I don't feel like getting out of bed, God. I don't know what to do with myself today. I'm just not really feeling it right now. Then hey he can help you out with that or you can just talk to God be like Lord bless bless my family bless my natural family bless my children bless my parents Lord I just thank you for just listening to me see so there's all different types of ways to talk to God uh, and so uh, we need to learn to put we need to learn to magnify him even when we don't feel like it. 
even when nobody understands what the heck we're talking about, even when we don't understand the things that God told us to do, we still have to lift him up. And the word of God tells us, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. That's that's God talking. If we lift him up, if we magnify his name, if we praise him, if we walk upright before him, he'll do the drawing. We're not supposed to do that. We're just supposed to be the examples of Christ in the land. We're supposed to lift him up. We're supposed to magnify his name and then he will do the drawing. So, um, I guess that would be it for me. So, I pray that this broadcast was a blessing to you. Once again, you can reach us at our 24-hour prayer line, 313-736-3068. Once again, 313-736-3068. Also, you can email us at Zion City International Church at Yahoo. You can also reach us on Twitter at Zion City Church. You can also reach us on Facebook at Zion City International. And we look forward to hearing from you. Also, we have a prayer line every Monday at 830 from 830 to 930. Look forward to seeing you there. Have a blessed day.